This is an off route mine. During the Cold War, NATO was understandably interested in capable anti tank weapons. This footage from a late 70s British Army training film shows a team of Royal Engineers setting up an L 14A1 off route mine, ready to ambush an attacking Soviet tank. Unlike a conventional mine which detonated when a vehicle drove over it, the off route mine would be tripped by a brake wire set across the vehicle's likely path. When the wire was tripped or broken, the mine's charge would be electronically detonated. The L-14A1 was developed in the early 70s by France's state arsenals. It was known as the Mine Anti-Char Action Horizontale Model F1, or Mika F1. It was manufactured throughout the 1970s and 80s by Giat Industries. The mine was essentially an electronically fired shape charge. It used the misnay chardin effect rather than the Munro effect. The former relies on a shallower concave shape charge. The off-route mine had a copper cone that was superheated by the explosion and fired out towards the target. This gave it the ability to project its cone further and remove the need for the shape charge to detonate on contact with the target vehicle. The mine had an effective range of between 70 and 80 meters, and according to the 1977 French manual, the projectile created by the detonation could travel up to six kilometers if it didn't strike a target. In terms of the mine's effectiveness, the same manual states that 40 meters was the optimal range, but no closer than two meters. The manual also notes that the slightest obstacle in the trajectory of the projectile, such as earth or shrubs, considerably reduces performance. This diagram from the French Army Manual shows the effect of the mine on 70 millimeters of armor at 40 meters, with zero degrees of angle. When detonated, the mine could throw fragments in a radius of up to 100 meters, and after a successful strike, could throw shards of armor up to 200 meters behind the target. The British mines came in the L27A1 kit, which included a pair of L14A1 off-route mines, as well as instructions, brake wires, a night sighting tool, and an adjustable stand for mounting. The mine's electrically powered detonator was powered by four D-cell batteries, which sappers complained had to be changed frequently. The mine itself weighed in at a hefty 12 kilograms and was packed with just over six kilograms of hexalite explosive. In this clip from another training film, we can see a sapper removing a mine from one of the actual L27A1 anti-tank mine kits. When used during an ambush, as seen here, the detonation of a conventional or an off-route mine would signal the section or platoon to open fire with everything they had. There was also a training version, the L28A1, which fired a paint-filled sponge to mark the side of the vehicle and confirm a hit. The Mika F1 was removed from French service in 2001, an improved version, the F2, was manufactured in 1996-97 and was used by the French until the mines were withdrawn in 2004 due to corrosion. While some mines may have remained in stores, as some have been seen as late as 2016, they contravened the 1997 Ottawa Treaty on anti-personnel mines, because the brake wire could in theory be tripped by a human rather than a vehicle. As a result, the off-route mines couldn't be used operationally. It was replaced in British service by the Argus off-route anti-tank mine, which fired a modified 94mm rocket with a tandem heat warhead. In 1997, it was reported that there were as many as 4,870 off-route mines held in British Army stores. But in line with the Ottawa Treaty, this had been reduced to zero by 1999. Thanks for joining me for this look at a relatively little known anti-tank weapon of the Cold War. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like, drop us a comment and share the video with friends. You can also support us via Patreon, where you can get early access to videos, as well as lots of other thank you perks, such as stickers. Thanks again for watching. Catch you next time.